Okay. Thank you. Thanks, okay. So we're at Rico and Karlstad is one of my favourite methods of selling actually and this is the biggest selling radius that we have about 50 kilometres from the farm which is the maximum that we sell products from our farm. I just wanted to let you folks know that I'm going to be in Ireland in less than three weeks time now. I'm coming over in my vehicle and I'm planning a long trip through Norway, Denmark and the UK to visit uh, maybe four, five or six farms that are run by students of ours who are doing amazing work and quite a range of different places from vegetable producers on a very small scale to big uh, farms that have decades of history. So I'm really excited to be able to bring that to you. I know that they have eight spots left on the course in Ireland. So if you're in the UK or in Ireland, that's a particularly good chance to come and take a training with myself and come and meet some amazing crew. These guys are all really good friends. They're all pro surfers that have turned their attention to restoring landscape. They run a very productive market garden and have a huge tree planting charity and uh, just bought a huge piece of land that they are planting native trees back into and really focused on how they can benefit their local community in different ways and so that's the last official training that I'm running for quite some time now so if you're looking to do any training with me in the next six to eight months then this is your last chance it's going to be great to be in Ireland and I'm going to be on a road trip until then bringing you some great videos from amazing farms along the way and just really excited to share some amazing upcoming uh, regenerative agriculture projects to with you but just wanted to say that's in the links below if you want to come and meet us in Ireland it's going to be an amazing 10-day intensive on how to do productive small-scale regenerative agriculture farming for a living so it's quite different to the sort of typical permaculture trainings that you'll find in that part of the world this is about full-on profitable soil building community rebuilding regenerative agriculture so I hope to meet some of you there I'm really excited to hang out with those folks there and be a benefit through the training that we can offer. So there's been some confusion uh, amongst those national viewers about what Rico actually is and the best way I can describe it is like a, a pre-sold farmers market so it's one way to get around trading lots it's also a way to turn up a market as it were without bringing stuff you haven't sold so there's zero wasted. Uh, but by trading online before we even get here, it helps get around trading law so that it enables us to turn this car park, which is just a typical car park, just off the big highway in the middle of a busier town. This is our biggest selling point uh, into a merchant zone, essentially. And so we have two things going on here. We have always done drop-offs before Rico came along. It's a movement that came out of Finland and has spread across Scandinavia. But we all were doing from year one, we were making drop-off points. So we have customers that are on those regular drop-offs anyway, and then we have customers who are coming for Rico specifically. But it's still my favorite sales model because of three simple things. One, it puts you in direct contact with your customers. And in this little Rico group alone, there's 8,000 customers that are exposed to our products. So by collaborating with other producers, we get a much wider exposure to a bigger group of people. Two is the transparency, so you can see the other producers' sales. Now there's other vegetable producers in this group and other egg producers in this group. And it's quite interesting to watch. We've been, I would say, a trendsetter in this concert Rico ring because we were some of the initial force behind it and Johanna's been a big part of being the admin of the group. And we steered that to be at a time and place that we already used as a drop-off. So it was very convenient for us to facilitate that happening and it's a good location for it. But that transparency is really great. It allows this healthy kind of competition where you can see, you know, ah, this person is growing their sales more than mine. So what are they doing and how can I do that differently? And I think that's a really healthy element of a healthy ecosystem is this healthy competition. And the third and biggest reason that we love Rico, I think, is that it's just the most rapid way to come and drop off thousands of euros of products. We're selling eggs, chickens, smoked chickens, turkeys, vegetable boxes, and it's selling is half the work of any farming, basically. 
And so this is a model where we can turn up for between 30 and 45 minutes and just drop off all that product to the type of customer who is willing to come and meet you in a car park. So we've timed it well that it's kind of ended the working day, people are on their way home. So it's not so much hassle for them and that's one of the benefits of having a mixed group is the customer can come and pick up the whole range of products and make it much more convenient for them than in the old days when it was just us dropping. But that time saving is such a critical one because we've got to go home and do animal chores and still work in the garden or whatever it is. So having customers that want to meet us halfway there is such a critical thing that I really encourage you to look at ways of doing it because it's you know it's very different to standing at a farmer's market all day, not actually knowing what we're going to sell. Here we've pre-sold everything in advance. Customers can settle up with cash or switch, which is a, an app on the phone that we use for them. Or with card payments through little eye settlers, like a little card reader that we have here. But everything's technically pre-sold because it's been ordered online before. And that makes them all awesome. So I'd recommend that if you don't have access to Rico in the countries you're in, to consider if you can work with other producers to create a kind of critical mass to set this kind of thing up on your own. There is information online about Rico. It's R-E-K-O. So Thomas Snellman in Finland that set that up and he's been busy helping spread that across Scandinavia. But one of the critical things that makes it work, in my mind, is a critical mass of producers. Good. We have two, three people who haven't come yet, but maybe we'll see them in a bit. Um, yeah, it's the first time after the fresh chicken's out, so mm -hmm. we, we can see that in the sales a bit. It's like it drops a little bit after the fresh chicken. We're out of fresh chicken now because we finished ordering last week, and so we we'll see a little sales dip. We're trying the pork smoked chicken today. This is the product nice. we've been. So this is the new product we've been making in the store. This is essentially half a bird uh, in its weight round. And have they been? Yeah. I've been to this today. Thank you. Smoked chicken from the farm. It's good. It's really, really good. Thank you. Something I would say to those of you who are not in Scandinavia is this is a model you could set up. Now, it requires a lot of pre-thought and there might be models of food hubs and local food nodes in the country you come from that you might want to consider participating in one of those. But if you have that initiator kind of energy, then what I would say is it's good to get a critical mass of people together. And I think that's been our experience setting up uh, different Ricos around our selling radius. Here we can come for 30 to 40 minutes, drop off everything and be out of there. And that's really a great model to work with when you have chores to do at home. And it gives just enough uh, customer interaction for customers to feel connected and satisfied. And, and they're all busy too, right? So they're very happy to be served efficiently and quickly and be able to pick up from different people their bread and eggs and milk and cheese, whatever, and then get out of there. So it really helps to have multiple producers. And whilst that might seem counterproductive because you've got competition, I think that kind of healthy competition is really beneficial for the marketplace. It's really good to drive innovation and creativity as well as collaboration. And these are all people we see every week. So there's relationships built up there where we can share best practices on our farms, etc. There's different producers here, from meat producers to other vegetable producers, other pastured egg producers, as baker and cheesemaker. And so it really creates this whole array of products that uh, excites people to come here. There's a lot more value than just coming to a drop-off point like we set up in the beginning where it was just us there. It's still the best sales model I've seen because of the open transparency, the rapid transition and turnaround of product and there's zero operating fees. It's just run on Facebook. It takes a little bit of time from the admins, but it, there's no market fees and there's no standing around all day to get rid of thousands of viewers of products. So for me, it's the best sales model I've ever come across.